Good day, everyone. This is Chris with the Ancient Scholar. Today I'm going to go ahead and answer a question that uh, someone had uh, asked uh, actually in a comment on one of my videos. I believe this is on the mechanical, uh, the um, one of the mechanical ventilation playlists. And uh, um, unfortunately, I'm not able to really get to every single question. I'm, I'm being asked more questions, and I'm being sent more messages than than I can really uh, keep ahead of. Um, at this point, because uh, I'm you know so busy at school and work, but I do try to at least look at at them and and, and you know try to comment uh, the best I can and, and to let people know that I, I do appreciate uh, people watching and, and all all the great comments. But uh, today I think this is a really good question I received, and there is a lot of confusion, and hopefully we can we can work through that and uh, resolve uh, any any confusion that anyone else may have. And, and that was uh, somebody asked a question about peep, and they said, hey. Um, let's say that I have a person on a ventilator, and um, why could their tidal volume? Uh, I read that, that that their tidal volume might decrease if I increase the peep, and I'm I'm going to have to assume a couple things in this case. And, and the assumption that I'm going on is that we're talking about pressure controlled ventilation, um, and volume controlled ventilation. Of course, we set the tidal volume and the ventilator uh, will deliver that tidal volume and it doesn't necessarily care about the pressure. Now, I know obviously there are backup, there are pop-off pressures we can set and there are hybrid um, types of ventilation like uh, PRV, pressure regulated volume control or PRVC or volume control plus, VC plus. Uh, but if we're just talking about kind of the, the run of the mill concept of volume control ventilation, that is to say that uh, we set a volume and the ventilator delivers that volume regardless of what what PEEP we have. In pressure control ventilation, that's not the case. Um, and um, uh, I think there, the big where the most confusion comes from all this is the fact that a lot of us, a lot of people will say, well, in pressure control ventilation, pressure, uh, let's see if I can write this up here, pressure equals volume, or maybe not equals, but approximates volume. And that is to say that there is a direct, uh, some sort of relationship, it may or may not be linear in all patients, um, but it, the general rule is I increase pressure, I'm going to increase volume. If I decrease pressure, I'll decrease volume. And intuitively, I think that makes sense, and I think in a lot of cases, in, intuitive, the intuition is is okay. Um, you know, if I have somebody, let's say they're in pressure control and I have their PIP, uh, their peak inspiratory pressure, and I have that set at 10 um, centimeters of water, and let's say that they have a tidal volume of around 300 milliliters per breath. Obviously, tidal volume is going to change a little bit in pressure control ventilation. And then I increase their PIP to 20 centimeters of water, and I go ahead and I look and I see a tidal volume of 480. Well, that is um, experiment. You know, through experiment, at least that's a that's a justification or verification that hey, yeah, that 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 there is this this relationship between pressure and volume. Um, the relationship, however, is not pressure per se. The relationship between pressure and volume and pressure control ventilation is not pressure. It is delta P. Delta P approximates delta V. That is to say a change in pressure is going to uh, equate to a change in volume. This is very different than just a pressure. Okay, So let's say that I have a person in pressure control ventilation and I have their PIP. Okay, I have their PIP set at 20. We'll say it's 20 centimeters of water. And they are getting around a 500 milliliter tidal volume per breath, give or take. Okay, um, there is no peep. So if there's no peep, and I have their PIP set at 20, um, assuming that the ventilator doesn't compensate for peep and all that, um, we'll just put those boundary conditions in, uh, because a lot of ventilators can. Um, just just take it at face value. Okay, um, I have zero peep. Well, what will my delta P B in this case. Well, my delta P will be 20, right? I went from 0 to 20. Um, that is my change in pressure, and that causes a change in volume of 0 0.5 liters or 500 milliliters. Okay, hopefully, hopefully there's that there's the intuition there. 
Now let's go ahead and add um, 10 of peep. So now I, I add 10, so plus 10 uh, centimeters of water of peep. Okay. How would this cause my volume to go down, or could it cause my volume to go down? Well, let's think about this. What is my delta P, my change in pressure? My delta P is no longer 20, right? Because with 10 of peep, I'm starting at 10. Right? I'm starting at 10. I'm not starting at 0 anymore. I'm starting at 10, and I'm going to 20. Okay. So my delta P in this case, my change in pressure, is in fact 10 centimeters of water. Okay. So that's my delta P is half of what my original delta P is. Now, in this case, I would definitely expect the volume to decrease because my delta P has decreased. Um, now, again, there are a lot of ventilators that will actually compensate for this, like uh, the Maquette Servo I is, is, is PEEP compensated, and it will maintain the same delta P that you want, even if you add PEEP. Now, obviously, that, that means that your, your, um, your pressures can get quite elevated when you have PEEP and high PIPs, um, and that's something we need to watch out for. Uh, but uh, a lot of the newer ventilators are PEEP compensated. However, and if we look at just the concept of delta P without PEEP compensation, um, hopefully there's some intuition that it's the change in pressure that causes a change in volume. And if that change of and adding PEEP um, in the absence of PEEP compensation will decrease our delta P, right? Because PEEP is a starting, you look at it as kind of a starting point. I'm starting at 10 centimeters of, of water and I'm going to 20 in this case. So that base essentially cuts my delta P in half. So my change in pressure is only 10 centimeters of water where it was 20. And that's where we can get our reduction in tidal volume. Now that's not to say that this relationship will be linear, okay? Uh, that now I'll have a tidal volume of 250 milliliters. That's not um, the relationship at all. Um, it's probably going to approximate uh, some sort of um, probably some sort of exponential function or maybe even a sine function. Uh, again, depending on uh, compliance and resistance and so on. So it's not a linear function. Uh, it's going to be a bit more complicated than that. Okay, guys, so hopefully that makes sense, that it is not pressure, per se, it is delta P. It is the change in pressure that leads to a change in volume. Okay, guys, uh, hopefully that you found that helpful, and as always, thanks for hanging in there.